I am very tired right now, but at the same time, I'm also excited to take a new flight for the first time on a 787-9, which is also Qatar Airways' most recent edition. And on top of that, I'm also just a little sad that I'm leaving India and my three-week visit ended pretty fast, but you know, I gotta get moving. Once I get back, it's two weeks, and then after that summer break is over, college starts once again, going into my third year, but forget about that. This video is gonna be focused on Qatar Airways, mostly the 787-9, because I already covered the A350-1000 in another video, but that being said, let's go. So I'm going to focus less on covering the A350-1000 and focus more on the 787-9, which is this flight. But I'm also going to cover the other flight because, I don't know, I just don't feel like it would make sense to make two different videos because I feel like it's going to be hard to do with the tight layovers I currently have. But based on how you're watching these videos, Maybe I made two videos, or maybe I made only one, but that's something that editor soup is going to decide. And with that being said, I'm currently here in Bengaluru Airport, and this is the current check-in. Right after check-in, it's time to order a flight. Now time to board. The reason I haven't spoken much is, let's just say I had an interesting story with security, but here we go on 787-9. We're here on Qatar Airways' newest aircraft. That's the business class. And this is the economy. All right, so I'm now here in my seat the back of the 787-9 this very much looks like a 787 inside obviously and sort of looks like a revamped version of the A350-1000 except I feel like rather than just changing the business class they've generally modified the product when it comes to economy also you can see that the entertainment system is little different right over here they have one of these for storing your mobile devices and as you can see we have the infamous dreamliner windows with the dimming features tray table very similar to the 350 the 787 has a uh, that we just had an announcement but Either ways, we have right over here a tray table that's very similar to the A350-1000 and 787 also has pretty high ceilings but you obviously can tell it's a narrower plane and you can see the curve right over here and the legroom here once again very good and we have slightly revamped, slightly larger entertainment screen. It's but actually time for takeoff, so we're about to uh, push back. Alright, so it's still dark. And it's 4 a.m. right now. It's a 4 a.m. departure time and it's sort of rainy. I was honestly hoping we could get sunrise on this takeoff, but I'm not too sure if we'll be able to get that. All right. 
right? So they seem to have dimmed the mood lighting for this flight. Alright guys, so the mule took up the majority of the flight, and to be honest, the mule service was not that bad. As you can see, this is the bun, which unfortunately has sesame in it, which I'm allergic to. That's the one thing that sucks, in my case with Qatar Airways, but, you know, we have some dessert, we get some fruits, we have some jam right there. And one thing Qatar Airways likes doing is they give a water bottle, as you can see, Something that some airlines do and some don't, but Qatar is just one which does. And when it comes to drink selection on Qatar Airways, Qatar Airways does not miss. They're also very generous. For example, I was able to get mango juice and coffee on my flight. Usually some airlines will limit you to only one drink. Qatar allowed me to have two. As you can see, there's a fruit we have, some honeydew and some candy. The main meal we have in this flight is one out of India. We have something traditional in terms of the meal selection. Wait, wait a minute for me to just, just show it. Come on, come on, just open there. So that's what we have. Something pretty traditional. Traditional Indian breakfast. We have some sambar, we have some rice, and we also have some, if I'm not mistaken, butter. I don't remember. But other than that, I spent a large amount of the flight playing around with the entertainment system, which on the Dreamliner is bigger than it is on most aircrafts. So as you can see, I'm navigating through the capacitive touch they offer, which is actually really responsive, way better than most airlines in terms of entertainment offerings. As I said in my previous video, Qatar Airways just doesn't miss. They have great shows, great movies, and also a great library of games. And with the big display on the 787-9, I could surely enjoy a way longer flight on this aircraft because obviously the 787-9 is a long haul aircraft, which does way longer flights than the one I was on. And for sure, Qatar Airways is equipped for it. But anyways, it's now time for landing in Doha.
Welcome to Doha, the state of Qatar, your gateway to the world. Local time here is 5.13 a.m. For your safety, please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened until the aircraft has completely stopped and the seatbelt sign is switched off. Alright, so right after landing, I ended up using the restroom and this is what the restroom looks like on 787-9. As you can see, you saw my A350-1000 video earlier. It's very similar to the A350-1000. You have this area, you have you know, the toilet, everything. You have some LEDs right over here. Generally, a very nice restroom is there on Qatar Airways where they try to make a floor, they try to put some accent lighting here, try to make it more welcoming rather than just being your average restroom. Generally shows that Qatar as an airline is one that puts care into their products. And now I honestly need to get out of this plane because the plane has been on the ground for pretty long. Alright, time to leave the aircraft. Once again, the business class seats right over here. This is what the 787-9 business class is. And honestly, I like this branding here. Goodbye. Very nice. Goodbye. And now, what it feels like getting off, get onto a bus at Doha Airport. I'm not gonna lie, it's very humid right now during the summer. And walking out of the bird, you know, 77 9. Alright, guys, so upon arriving in the Doha Airport, we got bust, and to be honest, when transiting in Doha, there's a good chance you're gonna end up in a bus gate because a lot of flights in Doha use the bus gate and to be honest, it may not be the most pleasant thing but with an airport that has the kind of traffic Doha has you obviously will expect the airport to always be operating at max capacity and generally Doha airport is probably one of the best airports if not the best airport I've been to as you can see there's the Louis Vuitton store, as all airports generally tend to have some store that sells designer clothing and other items like that. And we have the famous teddy bear at the Doha airport, which was bought at an auction, I think in Scotland, if I'm not mistaken. And to be honest, it's not as impressive as I thought it was because people on YouTube talk a lot about this teddy bear and in all honesty, it's cool, but... It's not the greatest thing in existence. But other than that, the Doha airport is generally full of a lot of restaurants with good food options that accommodate to literally anyone. And you also have some pretty nice cars up on display in the Doha airport like this McLaren which you could actually win if you entered a raffle. And on top of that you have an Apple store as well as a store for Samsung items. And with that being said, this is the end of my pretty quick layover. Right, so it was a quick layover, and now I'm actually boarding the next flight to Los Angeles on the A350-1000. This is going to be a long flight, 16 hours. Let's see how it goes. By the way, very nice boarding gates here in the airport. And as you can see, this is the aircraft. Yeah. The Q suites once again.
upon takeoff, the first thing that happened is we were served a meal. Honestly, Qatar Airways has pretty good food for most airlines because obviously in the economy, food isn't that great. I had an omelette on this flight, and as you can see, there was some mango juice I finished up. I had some fruits, and other than that, they also do provide a water bottle. Alright guys, so right now, I'm here in the restroom of the A350-1000. It's been about three hours into the flight, and in all honesty, I feel like 77-9 has a better restroom. They still have some decent accent lighting, decent floors. It's not a bad restroom for economy, especially. They have the spray, they have the toilet covers, you know. It's a nice, like, d don't lie to me. This is a nice restroom for economy, but the 787 just has a better one. In all honesty, with a lot of airlines moving away from super jumbos, and the A380, it makes me wonder, will people ever try to put shower spas for first class passengers in smaller aircraft like this? For example, there's another lavatory on the other side, this is in the center, in a first class cabin, airlines could say combine these into one big lavatory with the shower, because honestly, luxuries like that build the business model of a lot of these airlines but anyways what's up everybody just woke up from let's say five hours of sleep not too bad flying over Greenland right now which is approximately halfway through the flight and they've been serving snacks sandwiches but I just asked for some because I'm not too hungry. I also got potato chips which they give out as normal snacks and wake me up have some coffee. The time right now is approximately almost 7 a.m. LA time so not too bad. Hopefully I won't have the worst jet lag. By the way does provide is they have an amenities kit with this eye mask, socks, and the toothbrush, toothpaste, and earplugs. This honestly comes in handy and makes the flight a lot more comfortable. And also, props to Qatar Airways for deciding to provide these cookies. These are some of the best cookies, and I love every airline which provides these cookies. The route we took out of Doha is interesting, so we flew north across Iran and then went past Baku and across the Black Sea and then past Russia, past Scandinavia and down into Greenland from where I think it's almost a straight line to Los Angeles now. Yeah. And then about seven hours later, which I spent mostly just watching movies, it was time to arrive at LAX. And honestly, this flight was great, great entertainment. On both flights, Qatar Airways overall is a great airline. And if you honestly want me to make a video comparing Emirates and Qatar, I would be delighted to do it. As you can see, I'm landing out in LA. And for those of you who play Grand Theft Auto, you do know this view. This view is very familiar. SoFi Stadium
officially made it back officially at LAX and with that being said it's the end of this video I'm sorry this video took a long time to come out I actually had some issues with my computer where I almost lost all of this footage but was able to recover it was able to recover the file I was working on and anyways if you enjoyed it please do comment subscribe and go check me out on Instagram I do have another video coming out pretty soon won't tell you exactly when but I have one on the way with that being said it's the end of the video guys goodbye